Hey guys, it's Matt. Uh, the person that did this for us uh, asked for no recognition or shout out, but thank you for turning my first grade <laughs> kindergarten level diagram, which that's the best I can do, into something that's really neat. And uh, guys, at the end of this video, I'll, I'll tell you how I can email this out to people that want the PDF or the JPEG. And um, this gives us another great opportunity to talk about this again. A couple quick notes before we jump into this. If you can't see it, two things. I know a lot of people are driving. I will talk about what is said. You don't need to see this. But for those that want to see it and can't see, especially what you're looking at now, at some point in this presentation, I'll move to a, like a zoom in of each section to show you what you can't see. So don't worry about seeing it now. Um, I'll be able to either email it to you or show you as this video moves on. But let's just start over and do a general recap of what was presented. I don't know, what is it, six months back I did this? Hopefully I'll never, I'll never see my own diagram again. Hopefully I'll never come across that. It's that embarrassing. But the concept here, and if you don't need to have seen that video, we'll, we'll start over. The concept is my best understanding of, of how this reality works. I made these concentric rings. Okay, this is you in the middle. Ideally, a heart-based reality inside your own personal reality bubble. Not your own private Idaho, your own personal reality bubble. Now, I don't think anything here is very real. This is some uh, simulation, but, but for lack of, of me understanding it, saying a natural simulation that they're trying to hijack into an unclean simulation. They're trying to change the nature of it, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. I don't think anything is very real, but the closest thing we'll ever get to real is inside our little personal reality bubble. Your spouse comes in, your kids sit on your lap, your dog or cat sits on your lap. Okay, hopefully it's a heart-based reality. Now the point of me drawing these rings is as you move outward, the reality itself becomes more fluid, less real, corrupted, fake, basically all the worst parts of the Bible, you know what I mean? It just gets worse and worse as you, as you move outward. The sirens at the edge of the reality bubble here on the screen, using its minions, its harpies, its, its degenerates, its George Bush creatures, its John Travolta's, its endless systems. What's on the outer periphery here, whatever it is, I'm not sure it's appropriate to even get into that here because it's all speculation anyway. It constantly calls for you. Okay. The, the sirens on the, on, on the rocks, it calls for you and your reality bubble ship here to leave. The only thing or the closest thing in this reality that's closest to truth and their own personal journey of a real human being, it calls for you to extend your consciousness and your attention outward. So if you, again, I know you can't see this and I'll focus in a little bit later, but we're just doing the general overview now, the 100,000 foot look down. Um, on the, this first first layer out, I wrote, you go from a heart-based reality, this is a, a, a brain here, to a head-based reality. Um, yes, we all, how do you, you know, we all have an ego. We all have a conscious. Uh, we all operate with the frontal lobes here. We, we, we have to use uh, governors and limitations like English. But this is kind of the bridge, the, the ego-based reality. That is, always, that is part of us being in the avatar. It's a bridge or a conduit between this outer edge that wants to get in and us kind of losing ourselves and giving our attention outward. So the, the hands uh, I, that are drawn here, which is a great, you know, really nice representation of what I tried to do. My, what I drew looked like some sort of demented, deformed Kermit the Frog or something. This is good. Um, you know, it's taught us, it, it's always trying to break in, break into our, our heart-based reality, which most people aren't even operating from a heart-based reality. They're operating solely and strictly from the, the head, the, the logical mind, the ego. So we you know, we, at some point, maybe we did have a, a greater reality bubble protection, but most people just reach out and extend a hand to it. 
they it's not like the the corruptors on the outer edge of the screen they they um are trying to get into our reality bubbles but most people now are, are they they've done such a such a job I'm not going to put an adjective on that. They've done such a job that people reach out to it. 10,000, 10 million hands reach down. And in many, many ways, most people are reaching back out to it, to the corruptor on the outer edge. They want to embrace it. They want to look to its its uh, awards and its status, <laughs> its accolades and its Nobel Prizes and its... Uh, employees on the month declarations and it's every award that it, it it bestows on people so the only way it gets in is if we operate into a complete in, in, to put ourselves in the second ring here which is ego or head based reality with with the the brain here as the representation okay let's now start from the outer ring the screen and go inward and approach it that way and before we start, this is very appropriate. At the top, I know you can't read it. It says, does your reality come from the screen in? Is that the reality that you're participating in daily? Do you just take all your clues from the screen inward, as it seems most people do? Or are you creating it from the heart outward? Are you pushing it from the heart outward? which, of course, very quickly in this reality, you're going to bump into the screen, you know, the, the, the culture, the society, you might have to take a bus to work. Pretty hard to not bump into it, but are you generating it from the inside out? Most people, and, and I think you'll, you'll understand what I'm saying, most people are simply holding out their hand and waiting for the cue cards to be placed into their hands, waiting to be told how to live their lives from the screen inward. So looking at... The final ring here, the outer ring, I call it the screen. I've called it the reality itself. We just will never, while we're in this avatar body, have a true understanding. But is there anything good that comes from the screen in? I, I don't I don't see anything. If I may, Tell me if I'm missing something. So it's the screen. It's the reality itself. Again, as you go outward to this outer edge, it's everything is broken down. It's fake. It's less real. Uh, if you want to put it that way, where the, it's a, it's a um, a device that creates lies, deception, distraction, the seven deadly sins. I mean, okay, now who's doing it to us, or where is this coming from? This outer ring and its darkness trying to break inside your personal reality bubble. Remember, as we examine where the darkness, the deception, the lies, the corruption is coming from whatever I've said, what stands behind or animates the screen. Remember one thing as we do this, because we may lose sight of this, some of the smartest people um, that you'll ever meet believe that we, this is just simply a reflection of ourselves. Well, is there, if there, but is, you know, you get into this endless quandary. Well, something must be, gener a Christian would say Satan, something must be generating the initial deception, even if it's not able to pull it off on its own to break through into the personal reality bubble through the ego as the gateway in. So even if we do create it and it is a reflection of ourselves, well, what was the initial corrupter that created the, um, you know the, the 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 parasite or the virus or the worm or the or or that perpetuate the darkness was perpetuated upon itself by us as you know generator beings attached to spirit as quantum creators helping to create it. It is like then it's like the you know catch twenty two or the <laughs> Mobius strip or the Ouroboros. I don't know. I mean this these are hard hard things. Just just we're never going to know exactly. What's important is just be aware that. A lot of smart people, and most of the old guard shaking their head, that this outer darkness, lies, deception, is ultimately a feedback loop, a reflection of the collective, our, our collective selves. Okay, that's even if it, we don't know exactly the mechanism of the or the initial corruption. Um, you know, the initial corruption. Boy, it's amazing. It goes right back to to Genesis one, right? The initial corruption. 
um, then fed back upon itself by the reality creators in, in, in the center. But anyway, that's just getting a little a little out there. Just just be aware that you know if if everybody returned to their heart center and just kind of had an epiphany, had a wake up moment. Smart people believe this whole whatever is the darkness on the outside would basically cease to exist. It needs the energy of creative beings from their heart based center. That's why it's always reaching in with its here, its 10,000, 10 trillion hands saying, Take my hand. You know, whether it be as trivial as covet the red carpet with Ryan Seacrest or, or anything else, or pay attention to what the governor of New York is going to say today and pay attention to this news item. It reaches in with 10 trillion sticky, slimy fingers and people gladly, most people gladly reach up to it and shake hands with it and then uh, lick the slime off their hands there. So anyway, so remember, remember that We're, we basically probably are power. We power it with loose energy. We create, it would cease to exist if everybody got a clue, but let's, let's just remember that and move on because that's just an endless, an endless path of endless speculation. In terms of what we can understand, this screen level, again, is where the, it's where the darkness comes from, the lies, deception, distraction. It's, it's, uh, it, it's fake, it's corrupt. But um, everybody has their own opinion as to what stands behind the screen. Or if it is darkness today on steroids, well, where does it come from? And one thing we can get out of the way is it's not the minions, okay? The minions, an on-the-ground minion, somebody that's on television like uh, Bezos or uh, Melvin P or a governor or a president or a prime minister or corrupt people in Hollywood or, you know, oh, whatever the, these dark, Lady Gaga, dark minions, uh, script runners. It's not, they're just executing the will of quote, the screen of the reality itself. Um, and most of them aren't even aware of what they know, not what they do. They just are on such the frequency where they're not the same incarnation that you are. And they simply, without even, I'm completely convinced of this, they're not aware of ultimately what they're serving. They're not going up to the Illuminati window in the Chernobyl Control Center and the cue cards come out and say, George Bush, do this today. It just they just do it, serving the darkest parts of the screen without really knowing what they're doing. So it's not the minions. But then you get into we're not going to spend a lot of time here because you get into the some, just we'll never truly understand it. The endless police lineup. It says here, you know, my old police lineup. Um, you know, a Christian would say it's Satan. It, um, Satan. It's Enki. It's Enlil. It's the reptilians. It's the Archons. It's the Anunnakis. It's who who knows what's the the what at this point in how far human beings have come what is animating and 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 putting the darkness and sending it back on steroids and trying to get it back into your reality bubble heart center i don't we don't know again don't forget in mostly it's a reflection of ourselves you know it's probably nothing you can point at so what animates the screen the the ultimate deceiver that's trying to break into your reality bubble. We'll never know. Let's just forget about it. Stop talking about it. Stop breathing life into it. Realize you're probably doing it. I'm probably doing it. And that, that, and, 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 and imagine it being completely cut off. That's the best we can do. Now, it wants you to believe you can go fight it. See, this is where you get into the, remember I've talked about get your pickup truck army together and get your complaint signs together and go fight it. It, I'm not against all protest. I, I'm not. I'm just, you know, the, the, the lockdowns and some of the things in Australia and, and London and some of these good people that, are, you know, march and, and done in the right way to convince other generator beings and, and quantum reality creators and real people to get them on board in the right way. Some of those protests have done right. I, I understand it, of course. I'm talking about you know, at the end of the day, does it want us to get together our pickup truck armies and go fight it? Of course, it, whatever it hangs at the periphery out here wants to be fought. Anything that creates division is exactly what it wants. So th that doesn't mean, again, that I'm not for some of the things that have happened in, in the EU, etc. Okay. Um, it's just all, 
it's all how it's how it's done the more that we get violent or you know aggressively or get in people's faces and put more you know this this is really what alex jones did um we didn't understand in 2004 2005 whenever he took got his groups together and took to the streets of New York. There was that famous thing where he had people marching up and down, you know, no, I love inside job. No, I love inside job. No, I love inside job. They're just screaming and yelling. And, you know, at the time we thought, well, at least somebody's doing something, you know, at least he's, you know, I, I watched, I, I'm, I'm honest about it. I watched Alice Jones for years. I watched, you know, we, we were desperate to find somebody that had a huge audience that was seemed to be doing something. But we understand now that's exactly what the screen wanted. Because the people that saw the, 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 the person marching with his people screaming and yelling as they march with their banners and it's done with a bullhorn, you know, you know, it's done that way. It creates division. It, people get turned off by it. It creates camps that that type of presentation, even though ultimately it was at the time it was it was the message that we were so longing to get out. It's what the screen wants. It's what the reality wants. If that's why a show like Alex Jones or whatever can deliver tons and tons of never deliver the ultimate truth, the worry, worry about yourself and understand yourself, a Chiron's. Uh, last today talking about self mastery never will alex jones and the bunch will never talk about that we will talk about truths in terms of understanding how uh, dark operators dark work w- operate in this world and none of that really uh, helps you with true self mastery or what worry about yourself that none of that so that but that's what all of these um th- these these truth shows are for you know, because ultimately they'll give away that level of truth, which to us, or we had seen as high level truth, it's never the ultimate truth. They, they themselves don't even understand the ultimate truth. But ultimately to people like your friends and your family, it's just another camp. It creates infighting. It creates people um, fighting with other people where my dad used to come to me and say, oh, did you hear what happened to your boy, Alex Jones? And I'm like, I haven't watched him for years. What are you talking about? If he's in the news, like then they always he wants me to still care about Alex Jones. He wants to fight with me about it's exactly what the screen and the outer reality wants. A little bit better view for some people that are watching here, zoomed in on something here, and I'll try to move it around the best I can. So what on the reality map has not been discussed? Well the ladders. The ladders have not been discussed. Let me see what that says here. Hold on. Yeah, it says shoots and ladders. The shoots and ladders. The game, shoots and ladders. Truth drop in those types of games? Oh, yeah, you better believe it. Um, okay, it's trying to, to build ladders down. It wants to penetrate your reality bubble. For Even for us, for everybody, it, in some way it has penetrated, for some more than others. Some are completely The Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, those types of shows. Just simply an allegory where they're showing you what they believe the masses to be. And that's like a form of, of mockery. Those shows stink. They can run over and over, season after season after season after season. There's, there's probably, you know, there's probably like five guys in Skokie watching. There's five people the Orbitron shows five people tuning into those shows. The run just it's like a mockery. They're just showing you what they think of the masses. Um, so they build their ladders down when Lord of the Rings, like those movies, the the um golems or the what were they called? Orcs, they, they build their, their ladders to get up and over the wall. It's similar here. Then instead of up and over the wall, down or across the rings into your reality bubble. But people are also building ladders up. Remember, they want to get up to the screen. It's incredible. They must sit in their their the Illuminati control center, um, in Chernobyl Chernobyl control room, and be like, they must be so proud of themselves with their feet up on the control panels, going, you know, we we've got it. So we used to have to build these ladders and have all this deception, and we have to use to scale huge walls to penetrate the you know the reality um, heart centered reality bubbles, and then to use these massive tricks to get in through the ego. Now. We just sit here with our feet up on the on the desk, and they build ladders up to us. They're knocking on our front door to get in. They must be very proud. 
of their of their job. Yeah, I, I bet I bet they are. I mean, so I mean, we no matter how much you have to engage with society and culture. I mean, people listening to this, we're not. Whenever we can, we're trying to cut it off, not feed it our energy and attention. We have, you know, whenever our wake up moment was, we are in the middle of this society and culture. As I've said a thousand times, it's hard to go take your kids and drag drag a cardboard box up to a mountaintop in Montana and just live there. But you can do the best you can daily. I don't want to stray too much in this video about you know, removing power from your first name caps, last name caps, straw man, legal fiction, all that sor sort of thing. So let's see what some of the things here you couldn't you couldn't read about the outer. Um, this just it says Voldemort, Enki, Reptilians. It's just that on the outer edge that the endless police lineup of, of it's pointless. It, we'll never be able to point at anything. It's not a cop out to say the reality itself working through its minions because that's that will that is pretty much our best understanding of our only understanding. There's, if something could be pointed at as the bad guy, we would have pointed at it by now. It doesn't exist. Well, Matt, it doesn't exist because it's a reflection of ourselves. Yeah, probably. Probably. But that's too, I don't know, that's too hard to, that just, you know, leads into loops and there's no point going there. As long as you remember that. And if it is a reflection of ourselves, then you don't feed it. You cut it off. So it's just good to keep reminding ourselves of that. So this says here on the outer edge, it says blurry. Absolutely. As you get outer towards the outer rings, it becomes more fake, more corrupted, but it becomes blurrier. The Mandela effect um, could be a, uh, a symptom of too many, quote, real people, get, you know, just breathing life into the fakery of the, uh, and the corruption of the outer bubble. Um, you know, it does here say, uh, great, it does say reflection of ourselves, fluid, and over here it says the event horizon, and that is a, a, a good topic to, to discuss now, um, because remember, related to what we were talking about just a few minutes ago, reflection of ourselves, in the movie The Event Horizon, you had Lawrence Fishburne's crew, Captain Miller, Captain Miller, he had to go out and do this rescue or something, this ship using this gravity drive, the event horizon, the gravity drive was a some sort of contained black hole. That's always good to put in the engine, a black hole. What should we use to power the ship? A black hole? That sounds good. You're going to you're moving up fast. You know, they put a black hole and they call it the gravity drive, then it folds time space and then, you know, you've seen the movie. Apparently it goes through dimensions that aren't so good and apparently went through hell itself, the hell dimension itself comes back and then you know captain miller florence fishburne and his crew doesn't know dr weir <laughs> are you saying the ship's alive they don't know what they're getting into but Lawrence fishburne's like the ship it, it shows you the ship shows you your worst fears and there's no doubt that engaging with the screen or the outer periphery of the bubble and the reality itself it shows you what you need to be distracted it gives the people that study the different what, what you know i knew somebody that actually was a huge believer he's not alive now he was a huge believer not in in globe flat whatever in hollow there's it's not just it's not just light beer for miller less filling or taste great globe or flat there's a whole nother segment that talk about hollow and dyson spheres and even different shapes it, so so he was a big believer in that. So the reality not just fed both camps what they need to see, conflicting facts and information at the exact same time. There was a third or fourth camp in terms of the shape of this thing here. And he was fed by the event horizon reality, everything he needed to believe what he believed. No real world could pull this off. I mean, let's get this. I mean... If you, if you, I mean, anybody listening to this, that this channel is not for you. If you think it's secret societies running around doing everything, limited to men and women that sit down on the pot, it's not for you. Just one example by itself, the endless, I don't want to get, stray, the endless flat versus globe. There's thousands of evidence that supports both at the same time. It's not possible. Because they're completely conflicting things. Okay? 
um, there's your put your best friend, your true best friend, not the best friends you've lost, your true best friend over here, and then put bring Spike Lee into the room. There's there you can't the evidence it's one or the other. One's a creep. One's your best friend. There, it's never going to be like, oh, there's Spike Lee. There's my best friend. I love this about both of them. No, I hate this about both. Of them. No, it, it's likely you're gonna you can, the best friend's gonna have certain things that line up for the best friend and against Spike Lee. That's not the greatest example. But if the reality will step in and show, I didn't realize that Spike Lee has the same incredible, admirable traits as my best friend. No real world can do that. Let's look at this part here. It says John Dunbar, not Dunbear. Dunbar, John Dunbar, not Dunbear. What's your name? Stands? Stand up? Uh, John Dunbar, it says collective consciousness. It says acceptance. It says beliefs and consensus. Yeah, this is a critical part I should have talked about earlier. It expands out its power or it feeds itself loose or energy. It pushes its self inward through a collective acceptance, the co collective conscious. There's individual reality bubbles, but there's no doubt the basis of reality here is formed from the belief set of the collective conscious of what we, we believe real people. Now, how many people here are real that have those generator ability. We don't know. We don't know. You know, there's all sorts of theories on that. It needs to extend its hand down towards the heart-based reality of real people to, to create acceptance. And, you know, there's us that we're, we're, we're like a little tiny, strange little breakout, you know, club, the uh, club that people down the cul-de-sac would say, a club for the insane. That, so, but how many real people are still out there that are through its acceptance and the people's belief in it and consensus are feeding exactly what the screen wants? And it's just like the Borg in Star Trek The Next Generation. When the Borg come into the environment or the reality of the enterprise, the, the ship enterprise, they immediately start changing the environmental controls. They change the humidity settings. They change the, the temperature. It, the, the same way that the creeps that do the bidding of the screen or the reality from the outer edges of the screen, they get, quote, real people, whatever that means, to reflect back and create the sick, corrupted society that they need, that they want that they feed from a, what we just talked about a, a few videos back, the collective acceptance that it's just completely normal to go out and work your ass off, like it, say in a construction job, and then have three levels of government take up to 40%. And then that is the real money that they, that, 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 that sweet, that sweet ambrosia. Remember in, in all these types of analogies just pop into my head. I mean, Louie in interview with a vampire. To me, it's a vampire. Lou interview with a vampire. Louie, remember they they would um, didn't they have an issue if they if the vampires drank blood from a dead person or they if they had to survive or it was always didn't they have to drink from live even if they had to go to rats you know something like so it's like the blood from a dead person the blood from a live person the money the energy and the loose that comes to them from the the sweat equity the labors is the sweet ambrosia energy they feed from versus money they just create. You know, it's like creating blood in the lab, you know, would Lestat and Louis and that little obnoxious Kirsten Dunst, would they love, if they could just create it in a lab and the platelets in a lab, it wouldn't, yeah, you would, you kind of can sense it wouldn't do much for Lestat, you know, and it wouldn't do much for Louis and that creepy Antonio Banderas vampire. <laughs> who nobody would want to get too close to. I mean, they need the real stuff. And that's the that's the money that comes from the, the sweat labor. So that's the, the, the constantly working, constantly getting up in your business to create a collective belief set and acceptance from a, a collective consciousness of real people. Here it says, John Dunbar. I'm not going to do it anymore, okay? I know. Some you know, half people <laughs> like some of my dumb jokes, and some people are like, "Oh, sh get to it." Okay, um, this 
is appropriately here because it's the path that movie it's incredible the path of a real human being what is kicking bird say uh to him he says um we're proud of you basically he says you're finally walking or finding the path of a of a real human being and um just to talk just a few minutes on dance with wolves so it is so incredible so insightful this john dunbar the kevin costner character if you're screaming at me that that nothing nothing pure could ever come out of hollywood yeah i understand your your objection this isn't my first rodeo i'll get to that or maybe we'll do that some other time and i'm, I'm aware of that this is i didn't just fall off the truth or turnip truck um you have in the in the right the absolute worst path of a human being is shown in the in, the absolute worst path is shown in the first few scenes he is in the middle of war itself, in the middle of death for no reason itself, participating in it, riding out into the field, he, you know, uh, disease, death, injury. So nothing could be more one side of the scale towards the worst path of a human being. And slowly the path changes. He, he When he goes out to the soldier's fort... <laughs> I wanted to do it. I'm not going to do it. If he, he went, if when he goes out to the soldiers' fort, he wears his his cavalry clothing or his union clothing for for a few weeks, right? But then it slowly starts to come off, and they show him um, swimming naked in all symbolism, of course, and it's swimming naked in the um, the pond or or whatever. And then he's, he's then he doesn't wear the hat and he doesn't he's just then he's just wearing the shirt and all by design even if the director or producer Kevin Costner may, if they weren't even aware of it then somehow you know like Vanessa Villa this is how the retro causality works it just it can it can it can invade art good messages sometimes even when they don't even know they're putting it out but I we can speculate on Dance with Wolves some other time so then he starts wearing the Native American garb and they switch remember um they trade they they said you take the jacket i'll take the the um whatever the ceremonial breastplate of beads and whatever that is i don't know how to describe that and they trade the the hat he he gets gets rid of the hat and he gets the knife instead just giving away things giving away symbols of the the wrong path of what was once for john dunbar the wrong path completely then finds the way of a real human being seeing that the the slaughter of the buffalo for their skins is wrong so um it's incredible i mean the the movie who knows why they you know why they maybe they have to we'll we'll talk about some other time guys why but don't you know it, it is it is about as pure of a movie as you're ever going to find and the last samurai with tom cruise i'm going to do a whole video sometime as to the parallels between them it is basically basically the same movie that um for some reason the creeps needed to to put out a, a, again you know if you're a believer in karma to 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 help them they, they give back over here so they can take bigger, bigger bites of the shit sandwich over there if you're not a believer in karma they, maybe they do it for other reasons for contractual reasons but these are these are pretty good pure movies and and it wouldn't be the first time you know most movies of course i know are dark corrupt they're getting the intention is to get somebody in their heart based to reality to extend the hand up to shake the creepy slimy hand. I know that's the purpose of most of Hollywood, but uh, we'll we'll dive into that some other time. I should have done this a long time ago, but I didn't even cover the the middle or this level here. So the outer what stands outside the periphery, the screen, the dark reality, then inside, of course, heart based reality, uh, which is the most real um then the head based reality is the second layer but the third layer is society itself an engineered and completely fake and corrupted society itself where they've got everybody believing this is just the best a modern society can do and all these problems we experience in our gigantic to-do list and unnatural long list of things we have to do it's just the best you know best we can do the society itself and the culture is part of that. This whole ring here, I really didn't even address. That's how the minions, the screen comes down through its minions, but they're also kind of a reflection of, of society, pop culture. It's just one of a, a thousand examples. 
um, a culture that is um, supported by politicians, a culture today where anybody can just on any day of the week just decide they're a different, you know what, you know, this was, guy was Joe and now he's Mary or, or Susan, whatever, you know, this, that, that culture comes, that, so the society and it all, the whole society culture on this whole outer ring is to just lean on with weight to influence the ego head-based reality, which of course is the conduit into the reality generation abilities of the real human being. So I didn't even address basically one of the most important rings. <laughs> so I, I should have done that. Sorry. Um, but you, you understand. I guess it was probably clear anyway. And if we, this does here says armor, armor. Okay. Armor. Well, what do we do? It's so, if you believe reality works like this, then it's obvious what to do. You create as much armor around your personal reality bubble as you possibly can. In terms of what do we do, does it mean physically shutting ourselves off and um, creating real armor? I mean, no. I mean, it, the, the scene in The Omen where the priest plastered pages of the Bible all over the walls and windows to keep something out or do a Romeo, he, was he, he takes to his room and makes himself an artificial knight, shuts up the curtains, <laughs> makes himself an artificial knight. No, you can't keep it out physically. The armor, most of working on the armor to me is keeping the ego in check. The ego, this whole ring here is to me a conduit, a, a potential hand that reaches up and grasps the outer rings and the, the minions and the, the screen and all the perversions and the deception. And it's not just reaching up to shake hands in today's society and culture with today's your people down the cul-de-sac and in your family. They don't just want to shake hands. They want to do what they did in Avatar. Remember the blue creature in Avatar, the tail intertwined they make intertwined with the tail of its beast. Remember the thing it rode? They, they, they would like have some intimate intertwining. That's what the outer hand coming in. It wants more than a mere handshake from people today. So the armor to me has to be focused on the, first of all, seeing the tricks, but see, get, keeping the ego in check because the ego is the conduit. The ultimate hand that reaches up comes from the ego this certain part of the brain, the part of the brain that we think that's all there is to us, the part of the brain or mind that thinks in the spellcraft and governor of English, all of all of that, that is, it is hijacked to a degree, it is infiltrated to a degree, and it might be engineered. People in truth community talk about it, engineered way back when by archons, or who knows, maybe the whole idea of two regions of the brain separated by one bridge, a corpus callosum, it don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. Then See, our whole lives, when we in school and health class, you hear about Two regions, completely separate regions of the brain, and the only way they have to talk to each other is that bridge, that corpus callosum. Then we hear, well, people that have severe ep epilepsy, they just go in and cut the corp corpus callosum. Well, well, then how do the regions of the brain talk to each other? And if regions of the brain can't talk to each other, then how does the person function? But they say, well, they function pretty normally. Well, which is it? We hear our whole lives, it's the corpus callosum. We don't ever hear, we don't ever hear this, do we? The corpus callosum is the primary bridge, but the brain has many other ways to communicate with itself. That's not what we were told. So it doesn't make any sense. So it, it just goes back to, yeah, if some archon engineered the damn thing, which is, is probably a hologram of some kind anyway, that is the conduit or the, or the direct TV dish between real, your real consciousness that's probably not even here. It's not consciousness, it's not coming from between the ears, and it's somewhere else that's attached to you know, your spiritual self. The brain is more like a walkie-talkie, a receptor. So it could have been hijacked. But then again, it's all speculation. It's all pointless. The only thing that matters is worry about yourself. That's all that, it, whether they hijacked it or not, um, we are here in the avatar, and we have a way out. We're not. If we were doomed, they wouldn't work so hard. The 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 most important part, or one of the, if I could pick five things, if I could say five things, this whole ch channel was about for how many ever years. 
one of the main five things would be, if we were so screwed and doomed, then they wouldn't be working so hard. Pretty simple. If they're if they're trying to work your consciousness and to into a Ray Kurzweil like we just talked about downward into digital zeros and ones into a computer simulation, transforming reality itself more towards the matrix, sliding it down the scale, then they're trying to keep you farther and farther away from the way out or farther and farther away from finding yourself. If the distance they created was so vast that they didn't have to worry about it, they wouldn't keep working to to change reality into basically slide it down the scale into a matrix. So that that's very good news the, 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 that they keep trying to work hard. I've said before, worry when they no longer have to do anything. When they just start, the, the society just looks like kind of what you want it to be. The creeps are freely giving you what you think you want and aren't, you know, you turn on the news and it's like, that was completely real. Everything presented was re when they stop working, then worry. If they're working as hard as they're working now, see, that's good news. See, it's not, it's not that dark. But um, the, the things that matter anyway, if your whole life in reality is just about getting that fifth lick at a German lower Bavarian ice cream shop, and that's all it's about, then you got big problems. You ain't gonna ever get that fifth lick on premises. Your whole life is ba they want your whole life based upon that trivial shit. The fifth lick. I ain't never gonna get no fifth lick in this COVID environment. This is you know, and they and I've been threatened to be arrested ten times because I try to take the fifth lick on premises. That's bullshit. That these are minor rewards that the reality gives you and wants you to covet. Minor reward. It's no different. The, the fifth lick on premises it ain't no different than a Nobel Prize. Ain't no different. It's just a just a little pleasure that's associated with this reality. The bigger <laughs> the bigger thing that I think the next you have to put into years things we can understand. I think the next ten trillion years are slightly more important than whatever's happening now with with the C positioning. I don't know. It's just me. I I don't I understand why most people think the next year and a half for C is more important than the next 10 trillion years in your eternal existence. I got to put into years something we understand. I could see why people think the fifth lick is more expen more just as important. I don't. I don't give a shit. As long as I don't I don't want jack boots to come in here and throw me down and put something into me or I don't want to be in um some sort of um you know, uh, I, I, you know, some sort of tiger cage prison where I can't even stay. I, I want to be left alone, but in terms of all the ways that manipulate society, at this point, who cares? Honestly, you you think you're going to be able to get the, your pickup truck army together and go fight it? That's exactly what it wants. If everybody just would realize, maybe the way I've drawn this is wrong, but if the basics are the, the basics are right. You know, and if it's just one basic, that ultimately all this bullshit is a reflection of ourselves, completely cut it off, keep the ego mind in check, understand when it's trying to get its sticky fingers into your reality bubble through the ego mind, don't let it in, cut off its power, strengthen your spiritual armor. Online, when it says, do you want to, uh, do you want to uh, accept these terms? Yeah, I'll accept the terms because I need new cable. But I ain't accepting. I don't. I'm not going to read this fine print. And if there's anything here that's saying I'm just I'm giving myself away or giving it power or energy, I don't. I don't comply with that. That's not what I'm doing. Remove the the power from it. If you click, I got to click. I'm not a robot to get to this damn website. So I got to. But but does it imply I am a robot and I have to? I have, I'm a robot. If I, but and I have to keep saying and keep reiterating that I'm not. So these are just constantly notice the tricks and remove power from the tricks. Strengthen the armor around your own reality bubble. It doesn't mean you have to go live on a mountaintop in a cardboard box. Just withdraw. You can go to the grocery store. Just, just you know what you need to do. It's, it's literally this simple. It is literally this simple. It is one half page. It is one diagram. Guys, if you want the reality map... Um, please email me. Um, but it's hard right now for me to keep up with email really hard. If you, you, you know, just maybe in a few days or spread it out, um, instead of emailing me all at once, my email address, uh, is at, um, I'm just, I'm not going to give it out now. It's just through my website, um, quantumofconscience.com. Remember that's spelled conscience, quantumofconscience.com. And if anything happens to the channel, quantumofconscience.com and freevoice.io, if anything happens to the YouTube channel.